Okay, today we're going to install the Greenstone Digital Library software on Windows. This is a Windows 7 laptop 64-bit. Uh, now, uh, we assume you've gone to the Greenstone site at www.greenstone.org. You've clicked on Download, and you've downloaded the Windows one here by clicking on it. Now once that's downloaded, before you go to install it, there's one other thing you have to do. Because Greenstone is written in the Java programming language, you want to make sure you have Java. So you can go off to the Java website at www.java.com, and under there, there's a download Java. But it also lets you know, I'm going to go right to the top part, sorry, back a bit. Uh, this button comes up here if you get there you want to know whether you have Java. So at the start, you know, there's a thing that says when you first arrive on the website, there's a Java download, but you may already have Java. So if you click on this, it tests whether you have Java. Now I did it, I already have Java, so there's no problem, I don't have to download it. But if not, you could click on the download, install Java. Then you're ready to install Greenstone. Now, we've already downloaded the Greenstone one, so let's go get that. Let's close off this, and we want to go to the usual download spot, which is in Windows, is in your Downloads folder. And here are all our downloads here. You can see there's actually a Java one we installed earlier. Um, Greenstone, here it is. Greenstone 2.85 Windows.exe. So I'm going to right click on that file and I'm going to choose to run it as administrator to make sure it actually is going to install correctly. See, there it is right there. Run as administrator and then I can actually put away that. So the install program is now running. And it's running because we have Java. If it didn't run, we would probably get some error message about Java not being installed. This is a slow laptop. Okay, it's a very, very slow laptop. Now, here we go, searching for Java, it's found Java, extracting the installer, and launches the install program. Here we are. Now, the first thing you want to do is choose your language. Uh, let's go with English and click Next tells you what Greenstone does. Sure, it's fine. Let's click Next. Here's the uh, end user license agreement. And of course, everyone reads these really carefully. So you can click Accept. Now, where's it going to install? It's going to go into Program Files Greenstone. So it's important to remember that. Uh, you don't want to change that necessarily. Let's just click Next. And if it doesn't exist, it'll create it for you tells you what it's going to install. Notice the Apache web server because Greenstone um, digital collections are presented as web pages so it needs a web server. Normally you'd use a web server on some big server in the library but this means it runs right on your local computer. So let's click next and get the install going. Oh, um, if you were running on a server you would probably have administration where you could set user accounts and all that stuff, but you're not, so don't do this. Click Next. And we can click Install, and it'll go off and install all the parts. The core system consists of the database, uh, the metadata section, the indexing options, the plugin programs to import your digital files, be they music, video, documents, what images, whatever, the web server part, Image Magic is a component that converts images, so you can bring in all kinds of images, but it'll convert them to the types that can display on web browsers, basically PNG, JPG, and GIF. Uh, there's GhostScript is a thing that will handle PDF or PostScript documents, and all these are packaged into one thing for you. Now, where's it going to go to? We said it's going to be installed on C Program Files Greenstone, so let's take a look. I'll show you where it's going to go. Uh, over here, let's go down to our local drive. Um, now, one of the things is in a 64-bit Windows, Windows comes in a whole bunch of versions. Uh, one of the dividing things is it's 64-bit or 32-bit. 
um, you'll see things called program problem and program files x86. Now, this is installing into program files. What goes into program files 86? Basically, other programs may go in here that are probably a bit more 64-bit ones. So for example, I've got the 64-bit version of Office, so it goes in there. Programs that are not 64-bit may end up in here, or some may not. It's hard to say where it puts things. Um, but check around, and we'll see that there is a Greenstone folder. Now what's in that folder? The main thing you're interested in is this, a collect folder. What's in collect? Any Greenstone collection gets its own folder under here. And they can only be accessed, that is changed, created, designed, worked on, in this location. And we see, for example, what's in here is two collections, a demo collection and a model collection. Now, if I wanted to work on this in another machine, I could send this folder to my USB stick, go to another machine, and copy it back to that machine into the C program files Greenstone collect folder and then open it up. This is also handy if you need to back things up. When you're working on your project you don't want to lose things so you want to create a backup copy every week at least or every day of what you've done. So you could copy this folder somewhere and that way you don't lose things. Let's put this away and see where we're doing down here. Okay it's just going on the image magic. So this is, oh, excuse me, this is a little slow very slow laptop. Ah, there we are. Done. Okay. So when it's finished, you can exit it and let's prove that it works. So, where is it? Click your start. It is under all programs, Greenstone 2.85. We see here's what we've got. Now there's a number of things here. We don't really care about the server. We're not really going to use that much. Um, there's a metadata editor. For example, you can modify the existing metadata schemes like Dublin Core or create your own. Uh, we may look at that a little bit. Uh, the main time we are spending your uh, effort is going to be in the library and interface or GLI. So let's click that and run it. So it loads it up in Java. This is the black Java thing here. We don't really need this window. Let's minimize it. You should get rid of things you don't need. Uh, don't want to clutter up your screen because you're going to have a lot going on. Now, first thing we see is that there's a missing extension. This is a PDF extension that we could install. If you're going to be using PDF documents, particularly those that are fairly recent, uh, I think the current version is 1.7, um, you're going to have to either convert them to the older version of 1.5 or install this extension because the Greenstone conversion utilities can't work with the latest versions of Adobe. So we may come back to this later, we may do that. Let's click OK for now and it's going to run the Greenstone Apache web server and the GLI. So what you see here is the GLI. You don't see the server yet because you haven't got a collection you're working in. So we could create a collection but what we want to do is let's open an existing one. So we're going to do File, Open, and it'll show us what collections are available. What we have now is the Greenstone demo. So we're going to select the demo collection. So it just gives you a chance to see if the software is working and to learn how it, what it does. So let's click Open. That's going to load that in. And once it's loaded, some of these other tabs will become available. So for example, the Enrich for adding metadata, the Design, Creating, and Formatting. These are actually all the files in the collection. We see there's a bunch of images and some web pages. Now, if you want to take a look at it, I'm going to click on Create and then click Build or Preview. Build will rebuild the collection. For example, if you have to rebuild indexes and things, so this is good. We haven't really done anything, so I'm just going to click Preview to take a look. What it's going to do is load the collection into the web server and present it in your default web browser. In this case, it's Chrome. So here we are. We've got a collection with a full text search engine. We can search stuff, chapter level, book level, search all that sort of thing. Or we can actually browse through a number of indexes. We've got four indexes here. Let's click the titles index and we see there's a bunch of books. Uh, for example, farming snails. Perhaps you're interested in snail farming or maybe you like to do some worm rustling or something. Uh, and we can see here's the book, blah, 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 blah. And we could read this if we wish to. 
fact, we can actually take a look at the text in here. So this is a collection. Now, when we're done taking a look at how it works, uh, here's some subjects, uh, animal husbandry, for example, other animals, frogs, snails, with a promising economic future. Probably not for the animals. But there we are, see? Uh, and here, if you want to click on something, there's the introduction to this book. There, so we're all done. We can actually close off the web page and then we can do file, exit from the Greenstone Librarian interface and it shuts everything down and we're done. Now next week what we're going to look at is, once we got it installed, is how do we use it and how can we take a look at digital libraries.